audience? Who are you trying to reach? Well, uh, partly me, and then partly people who feel that there might be more in them than they're currently manifesting. People who've been fed a nauseating saccharine diet of rights and freedoms for like 50 years with no counterbalance of responsibility. And most people find almost all the genuine meaning in their life in the adoption of responsibility. It seems to me that there's sort of two versions of you that are floating around. Mm -hmm. The one is the scholarly work that you've done over your career. Yeah. And then there's this online version. I mean, do you feel split at all right now? Fragmented is more the accurate than just split. Um, the political split that you're talking about is the humanities at the universities have become intolerably corrupt. They don't teach people to read. They don't teach them to think. They don't teach them to speak. They don't have them read great works. They've become indoctrination factories for a social justice ideology. I have a personal theory that I wanted to run by you, and it is that college right now and universities are their own ecosystem and that professors and students both have been sort of trapped in a war of ideas, as you put it, that keeps escalating. But that once you walk outside the gates of that university, that it seems very contained to the university. What I don't see is sort of this sort of veering towards apocalypse. Oh yeah, it's spreading. It's spreading into HR, into corporations throughout the U.S. through HR departments very, very rapidly. In, in what ways, though? In a way that is not sort of like, hey, well, how, NBC, about, you not, how NBC, about you not grab like the ass NBC of your coworker? NBC is regulating hugging. Right, and not only that, not but, only but that. Do you, they do you have, not feel like that was out of a response of these sorts of stories, like of, of generations of men sort of taking advantage? It's not easy to solve a complicated problem, and like ready-made ideological solutions don't work; they just make it worse. But, but come on, that's like you're just that's just like a maxim. You're like you're not actually addressing the question, which is like, well, isn't there harm that is trying to be solved? There isn't a there isn't a question. There's a set of questions, and no one's posing them. But Here's a question: question. Can, Can men and women work, work together in the workplace? workplace? Yes, I, how do, I do it. How do you know? Because I work with a, a lot of women. Right, well, it's been happening for, what, 40 years? And, and things are deteriorating very rapidly at the moment in terms of the relationships between men and women. It's like, we don't know if men and women can work together successfully. But in what in ways? Because like, in, well, in, in like, the sexual like, harassment way. Because 40 years ago, I would have been, well, I, I don't know, if, it, if I was a white man, I would have been Jacqueline's boss and I could have done whatever I, I wanted, right? And that there would be almost no recourse that, the, that a woman who was working under me would have. Now they have some recourse. I mean, is that is that a... There was recourse back then, too. You could take people to the police. You could take, Do you think that was happening a lot? I mean, like... I, I, no, I, I, I think guess it's I a just, dreadful thing to have to go to the police if you're being sexually assaulted. If, but you, if you feel like, like there is a reduction in harm, right? That, I don't that feel... Things are bad. So you feel like right now the atmosphere in corporate workplaces is the exact same that it was 40 years ago? No, but I'm not sure... I'm not saying that it's any better. It's not any better. Well, maybe it is. What, what is, I guess, like, I, not to ask you to sort of prove a negative, but what, I, I think that there is plenty of evidence if you look at all the stories that are coming out. Do you, do you not feel like any of the stories that you've heard about what Hollywood is like? Do you feel like that's not evidence that this is a problem? Evidence that Hollywood is a problem? Yeah. Yeah, but when I look at Hollywood, all, all these people coming out of Hollywood talking about how sexual misbehavior is a problem, and I think... People in Hollywood are talking about that. They've been capitalizing on sexual misbehavior for like a hundred years. But that, I mean, look, those are unrelated in a are lot they? of ways. Yeah, like they're, Why I are mean, they you as a professor should know like about correlation and causation. Like you're, you're basically saying, well, you know, there have been movies with sex in it. Therefore, a PA on the set of a movie, of course, should be expected to be sexually harassed. Well, no, I'm saying yeah, those two are those I'm two are separate that. worlds in, in any sort of pure logical sense. Like you're that that is just a classic mix up of correlation. And Why are they there. separate worlds? We don't know how to draw the boundaries. Because so what? here's well, here's the question. So do we you feel like any movie that has like if you talk about sex in your in your classroom, or if you talk about sort of sexual behavior in your classroom, and another classroom does not talk about sexual behavior at all, you feel like your classroom would have a higher chance a higher incidence rate of sexual no. assault or harassment? No, but I would but say I, that if I, okay. if, I, if I was part of an organization that built entire dozens of careers on sexual provocativeness, I would be very careful about, like, waving the ethical flag in the sexual wars. So you think Hollywood doesn't exploit sex? Hasn't the feminist been saying that for 30 years? The entire en entertainment industry does nothing but exploit women sexually. Is that true or not? And if it is true, then aren't they contributing to the problem? 
And if they're contributing to the problem, but, but then you, where's but, all the ethical... But you're, but you're arguing at that point that Hollywood is one sort of totemic idea, that it is one sort of... That, that a woman who works in entertainment must then like pledge allegiance to this idea of, of sort of totemic Hollywood and not come out and give her story. Like you're saying no, that, I'm, like, I'm, if that, 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 she, that she's like somehow complicit in all of it. The degree to which we're all complicit in what's going on is unspecified. I said already, you know, we don't know how to have an adult conversation about sex. It's not surprising. It's not the least bit surprising. So, I, I but I don't, like, so then, th what is it then? Like, because you're, th it's, this seems to be like the sort of collectivist uh, thinking that you rail against. You know, you're saying that Hollywood is one thing, and that Hollywood made its own bed, and therefore Hollywood should not speak about this issue because they're the ones that were pushing this agenda. No, it isn't that they shouldn't speak about it. Or that they, they should do speak not carefully have the moral about it. authority to They should speak, speak about carefully it. about it. Do you feel like they're not speaking carefully? Absolutely, they're not speaking carefully. Not, a, not, not in the least. What, what is out of control about it? Well, trial by public opinion, I suppose, is part of what's out of control about it. Trial by public opinion? Do you think yeah. that's what's happening? Yeah, to some degree, sure. It's, it's very easy for people to come forward with accusations and demolish someone's reputation. That's tr trial by public opinion. So, I mean... And we don't, have a, we don't have any conversation about the other side of the, of the coin. You don't think women manipulate men sexually for advancement in the workplace? Do you not, do you not think that there has been any sort of pushback against, against this Me Too movement at all? Yeah, there's been some. Okay, so then, then what do you mean we don't have conversations about the other side? It seems like... Every time I read any sort of publication, it's split more or less 50-50 and actually increasingly more towards, like, maybe this thing is out of control. It seems like that narrative is certainly out there. Yeah, true. It, is, it has started to emerge in the last couple of weeks. That's true. Yeah. So then... I, I don't understand. I guess I don't understand the question exactly. Well, my question is essentially that, like, when, when you... Is speak there about, sexual what, harassment in the workplace? Yes. yes. Should, Should it stop? stop? That'd, that'd be good, good if it did. That'd be good. Will it? Well... Not at the moment, it won't, because we don't know what the rules are. Do you, Do you think, think men and women can work in the workplace together? I don't know. Without sexual harassment? We'll see. We'll see. How many years will it take for men and women working in the workplace together? More than 40. To get a sense? More than 40. Mm -hmm. We're new at this. We're new at this. Absolutely. We're completely new at it. It's only been a couple of generations. That's part of the problem, right? Is that we don't know what the rules are. Like, what? here's a rule. Don't, don't How about no makeup in the workplace? Why would that be a rule? <laughs> Why should you wear makeup in the workplace? Uh, Isn't that sexually provocative? No. It's not? No. Well, what is it then? What's the, the purpose of makeup? Some people would like to just put on makeup. Why? To, <laughs> to, I don't know why Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. So your argument... I'm not saying that you shouldn't wear makeup. No, no, I'm not saying that. But you're saying that... that I'm when saying we don't know what the put rules on are. Makeup in the workplace, that they have sexualized themselves in a way. That's what makeup's for. That would, Jesus, that would, that's self evident. That would, that Why would, else would you wear it? That, let me admit, when women put on makeup in the workplace, yeah. when they make their lips red, when they sort of put on rouge, yeah. right? That when they enter that workplace, if a man notices that, that there is sort of a complicitness with, with which the woman has said, I am going to sexualize myself in the workplace and therefore. Whatever comes will come. No, I didn't say the last part of that. So I didn't what, say what so whatever then? comes will come. But, but I think the it, issue of complicitness... Is how about is high heels? Is this, is this, I mean, look. How about high heels? What, what, are they what for? about high heels? What about them? They're there to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. That's what high heels do. They tilt your, they tilt your pelvis forward so your hips stick out. That's what they do. And they tighten up your calf muscles. They're a sexual display. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use sexual displays in the workplace. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that that is what they're doing, and that is what they're doing. So what is the relevance, then, to like, sexual harassment in the workplace, then, if, if you can't make... Well, the Maoists like put everybody in uniforms to stop that sort of thing from happening. Men wear uniforms. That's the way they wear suits. I, I guess I, I'm not seeing the sort of coherence of the, of the thought that you're putting together, then, because... What are the rules that govern sexual interactions between men and women in the workplace? Yes. The answer is, we don't know. Right. So I'm throwing out some questions. How about makeup? Oh, that's okay. Is it? Why? Why is it okay? Well, I would think that there's certain ownership over one's body that they can take without... How about negligees? 
<laughs> well, look, if you that's had going a, too far. If you had a workplace with negligees, I think that there would be some sort of standard idea that maybe that would be a sexualized. Thing. Okay, so there's some line between lipstick and negligees that yeah. we don't want to cross. Okay, fair enough. Where exactly is the line? Well, I think that you know, much like Justice Scalia said with pornography, it's something that you can feel, or that you know it when when you see it. I would say that that Maybe. that sort of, but it, you know, what's confusing to me that for you know, and I really do just mean this in sort of a debate sense, which is that like, like these sorts of big collective ideas, they're they're things that you feel like are sort of derived through through evolution, that that people do come to a consensus that is meaningful. Um, I don't think that anyone would say that wearing makeup to the office is in some ways like sexually deviant or something like that, or that it's inviting a sort of atmosphere of sexuality within the workplace. I would say that. You the would second say that. part, sure. It's exactly what it's doing. Okay, Why so else I, would you wear lipstick? Complete the thought for me then, because that's the part that I'd like for you to do. Like, complete the thought. A woman. I'm not saying that women shouldn't do it. And I'm also not saying that it should be banned. But I'm saying that you're absolutely naive if you don't think that that has anything to do with sexuality. Or Obviously sexual it harassment? Does. does it have something to do with sexual harassment in the workplace? I don't know. Because I don't know what the rules should be that govern the interactions between men and women in the workplace. I, mean, I, I don't believe should, should people be allowed to flirt in the workplace? Do you feel that, let, let's just, yes or no question, do you feel like women wearing makeup in the workplace contributes to sexual harassment in the workplace? Sure, it contributes. And so what should be done about that? You as a clinician who believes that there should be prescriptive ideas that don't mandate behavior, but that will guide behavior. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. Do you feel like women shouldn't wear, if, if, do you feel like a serious woman who does not want sexual harassment in the workplace, do you feel like if she wears makeup in the workplace that she is somewhat being critical? Yeah. Okay. I, I do, do think, think that. that. Okay, let's move on. I don't see how you could not think that. It's like makeup is a sexual display. That's what it's for. You say, well, I want to look more attractive. It's like, what do you mean by attractive exactly? So then what is a better outcome for you then? A workplace with no sexual harassment, where women wear uniforms and don't wear makeup, much like the Maoists, like you were saying, or a sort of freer workplace in which sexual harassment is an inevitability because women wear high heels and makeup. Well, I don't say that sexual harassment is an in inevitability because women wear high heels and makeup. I didn't say that. Or that it is more likely. I said that it, it contributes to the sexualization of the workplace. What's the difference between more likely and that? Okay, more likely. I'll go with that. Yeah, more likely, right? Sure, okay. Okay, so which one do you prefer? I don't prefer either of them. Oh, which one of those two would I prefer? Yeah. Oh, I prefer the one where people had the freedom. And so within that, so we've gotten to that point, that people should have freedom to wear makeup, right? But that that will inevitably lead to, not inevitably, that it is more likely that sexual harassment happens in the workplace. Does, isn't that sort of well, saying that if women wear, like how is that not <laughs> saying that if women wear makeup in the in the that isn't what I said. Yeah. Like, you're, you're pushing it past what I said by a substantial margin. Sure, I said but, that uh, we don't so understand the rules like, that I, govern the, the interactions in the, in the, between men and women in the workplace, right? Mm -hmm. We don't understand the rules. And so I was pushing a limit case. That's what I was doing. I wasn't saying women shouldn't wear makeup. No, I, I was saying we could have a question either, about, though. there should be a question raised about that. And there is often. I mean, companies have dress codes, let's say, you know, um, and they have a reason for that. But, but the fact that we got tangled up in this conversation is an indication of exactly how difficult it is to have a reasonable, reasonable conversation about exactly what rules should govern the interactions between men and women in the workplace. I would object to that a little bit because I think the reason why this conversation has been difficult is because like, there are certain things where you'll just punt and you'll say, I'm not saying that, and you'll try and be very hyper-specific. And now, look, mm -hmm. there are examples of that where I feel like you were right. Like I feel like the Kathy Newman article or the Kathy Newman interview I felt like a lot of what you're what that she put words in your mouth I don't feel like I'm doing that in fact I've been extremely careful not I'm, to I'm, do I'm, and I'm, I'm definitely not accusing you of okay that. so I'm I, just saying that these sorts of conversations are difficult not that you're making it unduly difficult because okay I don't think you are sure so I, I guess look this is a this is a test case right like we, we are not here to say like Jordan Peterson believes that this is true we are talking about a specific test case like we agree, or not we agree, yeah. you are arguing that, that makeup is sexualized, high heels are sexualized, yeah. right? When they enter a workplace, the workplace has a higher preponderance of becoming sexualized. Right? Yes. How is, that, 
how do we not then take the next step and say that, ergo, if we want to get rid of sexual harassment in the workplace, that your belief is that women should not wear high heels or makeup in the workplace? Oh, because there's other potential solutions. People could, well, you could allow for a certain amount of sexual tension and not act on it in a reprehensible manner. I mean, look, if let's say you're married to someone, right? You go I am to a married, party. Yeah. Okay, you go to a party. Do you ever flirt? I mean, I don't go to parties. Oh, okay. Do you, do you ever flirt at all? No, honestly okay. not. But do you know how? But that is, uh, no, not really. Okay, well, I mean, like, so, like, 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 <laughs> so that's example. not so good. Yeah. Well, look, look, one of the things that's enjoyable about the interactions between men and women, even if you're married, is an element of flirtatiousness that can underscore the interaction. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to get rid of that. It's too tyrannical to get rid of that. But you're playing with fire. You have to know that you're playing with fire. And so there's going to be some sexual provocativeness in the workplace, let's say, both ways. But you're playing with fire. And you need to know what the rules are. We don't know what the rules are. Okay, how about what if I said it is okay to flirt with your coworker from time to time, but you know, don't, don't grab them in the private. Well, that, well that, that seems, you know, I think we could agree that that might be a reasonable start, right? But then, of course, you still have the problem of exactly what constitutes acceptable flirting. Do you feel like the majority of people then who are sort of in this Me Too movement right now who have been speaking out, yeah. I mean, do you really think all of them are not a, are saying that you can't flirt at all? You know, I mean, or do you think most of them are saying, you just don't grab me in the privates? Because I would, I, just as somebody who also has read about this, who's studied yeah. it quite a bit, who has followed it very intensely, it really does seem like the message is like, hey, like, you know, don't pull your robe off, don't grab me in the No, boobs. I think it's worse I, than that. You do? Yeah, well, look at what happened with NBC. Now you're supposed to report your coworkers if you suspect them of romantic entanglements. That's been true about American, like, I mean, you're, that is one symptom. But this, this is a policy now. It is. It's a, it's a policy, policy at one, one company about sort of this industry wide. Yeah, about this industry-wide problem. This, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a response to it, but it's a bad response. You said, like, is it only about not being grabbed? It's like, no, it's not only about that. If it was only about not being grabbed, would you be okay with it? Well, I'm not in favor of people being involuntarily grabbed. I'm not in favor of sexual harassment or sexual assault. And not in the least. I, don't, I think, I already told you what I think. I'm a sexual conservative. Sure. I don't think people should have sex on the first date. I think they should be very careful with sex. Right, so I'm not in the camp of let's grab each other under the mistletoe at the Christmas party because what the hell? I'm not in that camp. I'm in the be bloody careful camp and, and don't step out of line. And don't like, don't like uh, have designs on your secretary when you hire her. I think that's all appalling. But I don't think we're capable of having an adult conversation about it. Not as a culture, not even a bit. Let's say that the result of all of this, of the Me Too movement, is that perhaps there are some policies which might strike a sort of civil libertarian such as yourself or somebody who believes in individual freedom as a bit oppressive, but that women stop getting grabbed in the privates uh, I don't and think that that's this, is, this is the collateral damage from that. Yeah, no, is that, is that not a win? Is that not a win for somebody who doesn't think that women should be grabbed in the privates? I don't think that's what will happen. What, what, like, why? <laughs> Because I, I don't think that the ideas that are being put forth have the kind of power that will transform people's behavior in a reasonable manner. Okay, that's very vague. Can you just no, talk about it? No, it's not. Is, it is, it is, you've essentially said, well, I don't believe that, they, that, that the ideas are going to work. They're not concrete enough. They're not concrete enough? Yeah. I mean, I think that almost every big media organization has specifically rewritten their policies in the past few months do you, with very concrete examples of things that are not okay. I mean, like, do you not think that those are concrete enough? Well, maybe. It's possible. I don't know the policies well enough to be certain. Um, my sense generally is that, like, what would you say it? Outraged mob activism generally doesn't translate very well into intelligent policy. But, you know, but it it's possible to, that But it does lead to change. We'll One see. One of the things that you've talked about is that a lot of times you talk to these young men who are sort of flirting with far-right ideologies, and you try and bring them back. Like, what, what is that process like? How do you bring someone back from the far right? Tell them a better story. What is the better story? Grow the hell up. Take your place in the world. You've got something to contribute. Make a plan. Live as an individual. Stay away from the identity politics pathology. It's just an excuse for failing to live your life in a respectable and noble manner. It's a way better story than, like, go wave your idiot far-right flag at some rally with a bunch of pasty-faced morons. What kind of pathetic behavior is that? So it's time to grow the hell up. 
are you worried at all that you're sort of attracting a crowd that you might not want to attract? No, I'm not. I'm worried always that I'll make a mistake in what I say. You know, impulsive mistake, careless mistake, that I won't be on top of things in a combative interview, that sort of thing. And then I'll make a mistake. I've been worried about that almost to the exclusion of everything else for the last 15 months. But I'm not worried about the impact of what I'm doing because the evidence is overwhelming that it's positive. Thank you.